my name is Gay DeRusso, and I'm the owner and trainer of the Majestic Rider. I've been training gated horses for the past 20 years. I'm here today to talk to you about gated horses because there are more and more gated horses in the community now. I think it's very important that every vet understands the different gated breeds and how they move and what is normal for these horses. The reason I'm doing this is because I know there's no training in the veterinary schools on gated horses. You have so much to learn and so little time. And because of this, you're learning on the job. And I know in some areas you do not see many gated horses and all the breeds are different and move differently and behave a little bit differently. So if you haven't seen it before, I want to make sure that these horses are not being misdiagnosed. What I've seen recently is that these horses are being misdiagnosed with neurological disorders because of how they act and also because of how they move. And what I'm trying to do is just help to educate veterinarians so you can understand these gated horses, the different breeds, how to evaluate them for lameness, neurological problems, and also maybe help you um, just deal with them in the future. Let me give you a little background who I am. I have been training gated horses for the past 20 years, and a high percentage of those have been uh, Tennessee walking horses, but I have trained all the different breeds. Uh, due to this, I've seen the different ways they move, the funny things they do, and also their behavior and their temperament. It is very different from the horses that I grew up from, which was mostly thoroughbreds and warm bloods and Arabs because I did hunters, hunter jumper training as well as dressage for many, many years, approximately 40 years or more. And when I came to the gated world, I learned a lot and not a lot of people tell you the funny things they do. So I am here to try to educate you and let you know what they do and what is normal for them and what is not normal for them. A little history on me. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in biology. I graduate with honors from the University of Stony Brook in New York. I also graduated from Yale Medical School uh, with a graduate degree from the Physician Assistant Program. I have been a physician assistant for the past 23 years in orthopedic surgery. So I do know a fair amount about bones, joints, disorders. So what I'd like to go over first, uh, because I feel that they are the most confusion on them because they move so differently, is the Tennessee walking horse. And this is the one I am seeing uh, misdiagnosed the most. And then I believe the uh, fox trotter is probably next. These horses tend to have longer stride than the other breeds. But any gated horse, if it doesn't have papers, uh, can have Tennessee walking horse in it. Uh, a lot of people sell them without papers. Um, there's a lot of horse traders out there and they might tell the owners that it's one kind of horse when it is actually a different kind of horse. So if you're going to evaluate a breed and they say it's a Rocky Mountain horse, and it doesn't have any papers and it moves a little bit differently, just remember at the back of your mind, it might have some Tennessee walking horse in it. And I can tell from just looking at the horse and most trainers can tell what kind of breed it is because we know how they move. But again, the buyers and new clients and people new to these horses will you know, just believe who they bought it from and that's what the breed it is. So keep in the back of your mind that any of these horses could possibly have Tennessee walking horse breeding in them. So in case you don't watch all of my videos, because uh, maybe you don't want to learn that much on gated horses, I just want to talk about the most important thing first that I'm seeing the problem with. And that is your neurologic exam that you're doing on these gated horses. The Tennessee walking horse, which is a mix of breeds, and you don't have to remember what they are or anything, um, but it's a mix of breeds and this horse was bred to have a certain gait that none of the other gated horses have. And that is for their running walk.
what this gait is, is that as the horse is uh, propelling itself forward, it overreaches with its hind legs over the front hoof prints. And it usually overreaches anywhere from a foot to more over those front feet. To do this, this horse was bred a certain way in order for them to get that. But because of this, this is what makes the horse appear so abnormal to many veterinarians. So the horse almost seems like its back legs are longer than the front legs. So when you see them move, they will usually be very wobbly when they are going slow and not engaging themselves and they are just moving down the aisle way. They will tend to be very loose in their joints and again wobble back and forth. Of course you would think it probably has a neurologic disease, but this is how most of them uh, move if they were bred loose and lanky. The horses that are pacey will even appear more abnormal since you know when they're pacing the legs on the same side will move together so they're right front and the right hind and then the left front and the left hind. So when you see them pacing and they're moving very slow that will also appear abnormal and usually make you think the horse is lame. usually is not, although it appears that way. So let's go back to the horse's back end though. So they're bred to do this overreach and reach way over their front feet. Uh, due to this, their back legs usually are a little bit longer than the front legs and the way they have to move them to get them underneath themselves, sometimes they look like they're a spider moving and their legs are kind of creeping along as they engage themselves. As they overreach, if this horse's legs are pretty straight, which is how we try to breed most horses, this horse will tend to step on its front feet because the front feet won't get out of the way usually in time. Therefore, the horse will interfere and cause itself to trip. So you have two signs already that this horse could be neurologic. One, it's tripping, but it's coming from its confirmation. And two, it's overreaching but that's also coming from its confirmation how this horse was bred. 
because these horses would tend to step on their front feet, it had become very popular to breed these horses with cow hawks or sickle hawks. So the vets that have seen a fair amount of Tennessee walking horses will realize, even though this is a conformational defect, that this was bred into them for a reason. The horses that are cow hawked or sickle hawked can reach under, underneath themselves even better and they do not tend to um, step on their front legs like the other horses because the legs are going out instead like that. So they'll usually step around their front feet. So that is why they're uh, cow hawked. Now, if you watch these horses walk from behind, especially when they go slow, they will do something called the ringing. This is because they are cow hawked. And what happens is as the horse is moving its legs, its hock will go out to the side. This will appear to many vets as being neurologic, but again, it is bred into them. And what happens is as these horses engage themselves and actually go faster, they will actually move straighter and you will not see as much of that ringing. But you won't see that when the horse is just loose moving around. It's just when it's ridden and it's being engaged that you will see that starting to straight out, straighten out. These horses, as they get stronger and build up their back end, you'll also see less of that ringing. But again, when you're evaluating the horse, you may see this as a weakness and you've never seen it before. So you may also think it's neurologic. Uh, other things that you'll see besides the tripping or stumbling, the overreach, uh, the ringing of their hocks, your neurologic exam on them. Again, even while you're having them do things, they might stumble. A lot of these horses don't pay much attention. They're very calm and docile. And some of them are so calm, you really have to keep them awake. You would think they were drugged. They are not, it's in the breeding that they bred them to be calm and tolerant, and that's why a lot of them are not spooky. But due to that, they're also not very reactive. So a lot of times when they're standing still, or they're bored, or they're with the farrier, these horses will sometimes fall asleep. 
Now, again, they might be falling asleep because they're calm or maybe this horse has been passed around a fair amount and he has something like sleep deprivation. Um, so those are two things you want to think in the back of your head when a client calls and said the horse fell down with the farrier or the horse was just standing there and fell down because again, they will sometimes fall asleep on their feet. When they're riding them, if the owner is not keeping this horse collected and engaged and paying attention, say they're just walking on the trail very slow and on a loose rein, these horses will have a higher chance of stumbling because they tend to fall asleep and are not paying any attention. These horses, as they move, tend to not pick their knees up very high. They're bred with a little bit of pace and usually some trot in them. Um, if they're bred very well, they'll just gait. The ones that have some trot in them will tend to pick up their knees a little bit higher. The ones that just pace or gait will tend to not pick their legs up as high. So when there's obstacles on the trail, if these horses are not paying attention, they will not pick their feet up as high and they'll tend to stumble. Again, since they're calm and not afraid, they don't mind stepping on a tree. They don't mind crawling over them but you'll think that a normal horse would never do something like that. And that's right, because these are not normal horses. They were bred to be calm and tolerant like this. So the owners must keep these horses awake and gate them to keep them paying attention. And that a lot of times in itself will stop the stumbling.